The First American in Afghanistan, Josiah Harlan, Prince of Ghor. Josiah Harlan was born in 1799 in Chester County, Pennsylvania. He was one of ten siblings from a Quaker family. He was a soldier, a spy, a self-taught doctor, traveler, and a writer who wanted to be king. It's believed that Rudyard Kipling's *The Man Who Would Be King* is based on Josiah. He was about 25. His fiancée broke his heart and married someone else, so he left America in 1824, looking for adventures in the East. Without a formal education, he enlisted as a surgeon in the British East India Company, where this guy, Governor General Lord Amherst, allowed him to stay in India. But Harlan sought more adventure and fortunes. He wasn't a fan of the British monarchy. He was fiercely independent, and proud America was a republic. Then Harlan stumbled upon an account of Afghanistan, written by Mont Stewart Elphinstone, a representative of the British. Harlan was fascinated by the Afghan court, and he wanted to see a real monarchy in operation, as he believed the Indian rajas had no real power and were puppets of the British. So he traveled to Maharaja Punjab, Ranjit Singh's border outpost of British India on the Sutlej River, because he had heard stories that Ranjit Singh paid European officers serving in his court very well. While he was there, he met exiled Afghan ruler Shah Shuja Durrani. Harlan convinced Shah Shuja that he could help him win his throne back from Dost Muhammad Barakzai, who was the ruler of Afghanistan. So Harlan became Shah Shuja's secret agent. Went to Kabul disguised as a Sufi mystic Muslim. Then he posed as a British agent. Dost Muhammad was unaware of Harlan's intentions, but he was intrigued about learning how America was governed. When Harlan told him, Dost Muhammad noted a resemblance to Afghan system of tribes. Harlan fell in love with Kabul, writing that it was a jewel encircled by emerald with flowers and blossoms, whose odors perfume the air. Its markets overflowed with fruit, but while he was in Kabul, he survived a cholera epidemic. Then, when he realized that Dost Muhammad's position was too strong, he abandoned Shah Shuja's mission. Bored in Kabul, he went back to Lahore to seek his fortunes. In Lahore, he wrote of Ranjit Singh as a debauched, one-eyed alcoholic who had parties where he indulged without remorse or shame in sensualities of the most revolting description. But he still wanted to serve in his court. Traveler Reverend Joseph Wolf, a Jew who converted to Christianity, looking for the lost tribes of Israel, wrote about Harlan. He said he heard Harlan singing "Yankee Doodle" went to town in European clothes, smoking a hookah in Ranjit Singh's palace. Harlan won the trust of Ranjit Singh as his medical advisor. Singh appointed him to two unimportant territories to test him, and then in 1831 he was appointed governor of Gujarat. Singh then entrusted Harlan with negotiating with Sultan Muhammad Khan, Dost Muhammad Barakzai's brother and the former ruler of Peshawar. He wanted to bring 10,000 strong army of Afghans to his side, but instead Harlan started a counterfeit coin-making enterprise. He told Ranjit Singh to pay him a hundred thousand rupees to cure him after Singh suffered a stroke in 1835. This angered Ranjit Singh, and Harlan was banished from the kingdom. Harlan's 15 years in the Punjab region were a period of plots and backstabbing, and he was involved in them all. But Harlan wasn't finished with Afghanistan. Harlan went back on an expedition against Uzbek Mir Muhammad Murad in Afghanistan, the Khan of Kunduz. Now Harlan wanted to help Dost Muhammad assert his authority outside of Kabul. Harlan wanted to be the next Alexander the Great. With a force of 4,000, he forged an alliance with Azaras, who were willing to pay tribute to Dost Muhammad if he ended Murad Beg's raids against them. Harlan's major military engagement was at the citadel of Sehon, controlled by a Tajik slave trader, and the Azaras were impressed. Muhammad Rafi Beg Azara invited Harlan to his mountain stronghold, where Rafi appointed Harlan Prince of Ghor. In return, Harlan would help raise and train an army for Rafi. But the British did not like Harlan or what he was up to, so Harlan left Afghanistan. When he returned to the USA, he was treated like a national hero until he released his book Memoir of India and Afghanistan. 
where he attacked British enemies and called the British system despicable. He also wrote how easy Russia could harm British Empire in the Great Game, and British historians and strategists discredited Harlan, and he wasn't able to publish another book. With his money dwindling, Harlan began to take on other tasks such as lobbying American government to import camels and grapes from Afghanistan. The American Civil War came and the camel and grape projects got pushed to the side. Harlan put together the Union's 11th Pennsylvania Cavalry, which led to a messy court-martial. Ended his service because of medical problems and went to San Francisco. There, on October 21, 1871, he died of tuberculosis while walking on the street. Like and follow for more.